So about two months ago, my girlfriend and I of eight years took a trip together to Europe for two weeks. It was an amazing vacation and we had an incredible time, but after we returned, she started acting increasingly distant from me. She went to a wedding and had a plus one, but didn't invite me or tell me about it until a few days before. Then she ignored my calls while I was away on a business trip and never texted or returned them until after I got back. When she finally picked up, I asked her what happened, in a very nonchalant and non-accusatory way, and she didn't give any sort of solid answer. When I pressed her about it, she always gets upset at me if I don't call her back. Even if it's just like an hour later, she just screamed at me. I didn't feel like talking to you. How about I never talk to you again? And hung up. Tried calling her back. She didn't pick up. Sent her a text a day or two later. No response. At this point, something inside me just kind of broke. Like, we've had fights way bigger than this, and I've always tried to patch it up with her because I was head over heels for her. But this time, it was as if the in-love feeling just vanished instantly. I think it was because her reaction was so unprovoked. Three weeks later, she calls me and I freeze. I don't pick up. She starts sending angry messages telling me I better pick up or else and accuses me of cheating. I didn't. I don't pick up because I know it's going to be an absolute esh to show of a phone call. Another two weeks have passed. I've kind of accepted that the relationship is over but I feel guilty about not paying her back for the trip. We used her card while traveling abroad because mine has a foreign transaction fee. The trip was expensive, about $20,000 total, $10,000 of which has already been split, stuff we booked before traveling. Essentially, I owe her roughly $5,000. Before the fight, I had mentioned, at least on three occasions, that we should sort out our finances for the trip. And if she wanted, she could send me her credit card statement, and I would sort through it myself and then pay her back. However, she kept brushing it off and said we'd do it later. Regardless of how she acted, I'm a person that believes in always paying back what is owed ASAP, and I'm feeling guilty about it. Like, I literally will always Venmo people before they leave my sights. So my question is this. If we never talk again, and I never pay her back, Am I the idiot? Edit. Thanks everyone for the input. I did read everyone's comments, but unfortunately, I don't have time to reply to all of them. Most people are saying I should pay her back, though a good number are saying not to. I think I'm going to offer to pay her back one last time, via text. So there's a record of it. My previous attempts were just over phone call. Many people suggested I just give her $5,000, which I think is my fault, because I made it seem like it was pretty close to that amount. But in actuality, it might be anywhere between $3,000 and $7,000. And I don't feel comfortable ballparking it in case I overpay or underpay. As I said, thousands of dollars are significant to me, but nothing to her. So I think I'm just going to ask her to send her credit card statement and that we both go over it separately to determine the amount. Also, Lots of people said she's upset because I didn't propose on the trip. That isn't it. We've discussed marriage. She wasn't ready. And I had told her that I wouldn't propose, again, until after she told me she was ready. Edit 2. For those who are still following this thread. After taking some time to think, I've decided not to reach out to her to pay her back. She was completely unreasonable, and her treatment of me was completely unjustified. Plus, I have already offered multiple times. If she reaches out to me asking for reimbursement, I will ask for her credit card statement and repay her the exact amount owed. She can't exactly get a lawyer to take me to small claims court when she hasn't even made an attempt to request the money. I won't be communicating with her in any other capacity. If she does reach out and attempts to talk about anything other than the money, I'm just going to be completely stoic and steer the conversation back to repayment. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. We're obviously not good together. I've moved on. Please send me an itemized bill for my share of trip expenses, and I'll get payment to you. I wish you the best. Comment 2. It's okay to not talk to her ever again, but if you don't pay her back, you are essentially a thief. 
It's not a few hundred dollars, it's $5,000. Come on, bro. Now, for the update. Days turned into weeks, and the silence between us grew thicker. I kept busy, throwing myself into work and hanging out with friends to avoid thinking about the whole mess. But every time my phone buzzed, I couldn't help but hope it was her, maybe with a change of heart, or at least an attempt to sort out the money issue. But nothing came. Then, out of the blue, I got a text from her. My heart skipped a beat as I read it. It wasn't an apology or an explanation, just a blunt, we need to talk. I stared at the message for a long time, unsure of what to do. Part of me wanted to just ignore it, but the guilt over the money gnawed at me. I replied, about the trip expenses? She responded almost immediately, yes, and other things. I didn't want to get into other things. I just wanted to settle the debt and move on. We agreed to meet at a coffee shop the next day. I arrived early, my stomach in knots. She walked in, looking as composed as ever, and I felt a pang of... something. Not quite the old affection, but it was something. We ordered coffee, and the small talk was painfully awkward. Then we got down to business. She had the credit card statement with her, and we went through it line by line. It was tedious and a bit tense, we disagreed on a few charges, but eventually, we came to a total. I owed her $4,500. I was relieved it wasn't more, but the number still stung. I agreed to transfer the money to her by the end of the week. But then she started talking about us. She said she missed me and didn't understand why I had been so distant. I reminded her of the screaming phone call, the ignored messages. She brushed it off like it was nothing. We've been through worse, she said. I couldn't believe it. How could she act like everything was fine? I told her I needed time to think about everything and that I would send the money as promised. She seemed frustrated, but didn't push it. We left the coffee shop on uncertain terms, and I felt a mix of relief and confusion. I transferred the money a couple of days later, and she texted me a brief, thanks. That was it. No further attempt to discuss our relationship, no acknowledgement of the hurtful things she'd said. It was like the money was all that mattered to her. I tried to move on, but it was hard. Friends asked about her, and I didn't know what to tell them. I missed her, but I also felt angry and betrayed. I couldn't reconcile the person I had loved with the person who had treated me so coldly. A week after our meeting, she texted me again. Can we talk? she asked. I hesitated, but curiosity got the better of me. About what? I replied. She said she had been doing some thinking and wanted to discuss our relationship. I agreed to meet her again, wondering if this was a mistake. We met at the same coffee shop, and this time the air was charged with a different energy. She apologized for her behavior, said she had been going through some personal issues, and took it out on me. She wanted to try again, to make things right. I listened, not sure how to feel. Part of me wanted to believe her, to slip back into the comfort of our relationship. But another part of me was wary, remembering the pain of the past weeks. I told her I needed time to think, that I couldn't just jump back into things. She seemed to understand, but there was a desperation in her eyes that made me uncomfortable. We left things unresolved, and I walked away feeling more confused than ever. Now, I'm sitting here, typing this out, and I still don't know what to do. I've paid her back, but our relationship is still hanging by a thread. I don't know if I can trust her again, or if I even want to. And she's waiting for an answer. An answer I'm not sure I have. Now, for the comments. Comment 1. Hey there, it sounds like you're in a tough spot. If you're feeling guilty about the money, maybe consider setting up a payment plan or sending a check with a note explaining your intentions. It's a clear way to settle your debts without needing further communication. Comment 2. I get why you're torn up about this. It's hard when someone's hot and cold like that. Trust your gut on the relationship front, but maybe send that money as a final gesture of good faith. It'll help you move on with a clear conscience, knowing you've done the right thing. 
Now, for the next story. I'm 23-year-old female, has been with my boyfriend, 23-year-old male, for eight months. We were college buddies before, but we had feelings for each other, so we're here now. Yesterday, my boyfriend was taking me to see his mother for the first time because we had big news to tell her. I am five weeks pregnant with our first child. I know I'm really young to have a child. Okay, I was happy to see his mom because he spoke highly of her, so I was intrigued and excited to meet her. And if I knew she didn't like me, I would have never gone there. I remember when I walked into the house, she looked at me like I was some kind of different creature from another planet. She looked at me and then looked at her son like he did something wrong. I ignored it because it was not my place to act out in someone else's house, so I kept it respectful. She had already made dinner and I was hungry. When my boyfriend was going to make a plate for me, she grabbed the plate and said, I don't want that black person eating my food. Get her out of this house. She said it in Spanish. I was hurt when I heard this because it's crazy how so many people are discriminatory. I understood Spanish, but I never told my boyfriend I knew Spanish because I like to be nosy and hear what people were saying. When she said that, I acted like nothing happened. My boyfriend said we can share a plate and not to be greedy or anything, but I wanted my own plate. But it was fine. He could tell I was upset and took me to the bathroom to talk to me. I told him that I heard what his mom said and he didn't defend me. He said that she doesn't see black people like that, so it isn't normal to me. And I swear, I wanted to punch him in the face because why is he so dumb? Before I stormed out of the bathroom, I told him that I will get in baby on a living if he doesn't correct his mother's behavior. I'm not going to have my child around a discriminatory grandmother to traumatize her because black people go through enough. I also threatened to break up with him, but he's acting like a baby. He's definitely a mama's boy. Am I the jerk? Edited. Hi everyone. I'm not really going to make another post for an update, so I'm just going to edit the original post. I have decided that I will be getting baby unaliving pills from Planned Parenthood because I really think I'm not ready to be a single mother. It's not just about being physically alone, but even if I'm far away from my ex-boyfriend's mother, grandparents still have authority over our kids. And I'm not mentally ill because I thought of baby unaliving. Not everyone is pro-life, and not everyone approaches it the same way. It's perfectly fine, and no one should ever be ashamed about it because it's their choice. However, I understand that everyone's opinions are different, and emotions are different as well. But I do appreciate all the advice that I'm getting from everyone. Thank you so much. And by the way, if all the pro-lifers think they can try to make me not have a baby, unaliving, and try to insult me, it's not going to work. That's what you guys always do. You guys shouldn't insult women for getting baby on a livings just because you don't believe in it. No one cares if you don't believe in it. If you don't believe in it, get over it. You're acting like it's your issue. Get over it. You guys love to throw insults when you don't get your way, but you guys are the ones that don't even adopt kids. So let women get baby on a livings if they want to, and if not, stop being miserable and get a life. Go touch your grass. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. If you have this child, this man's mother cannot be in the picture. He showed he will not stand up to her. Leaves the question, do you want and are you ready to raise this baby alone? Comment 2. Girl, I would cut ties with this man-child. What you do with the baby is your decision. I wouldn't want to bring a child up in that setting either. Good luck. Now, for the update. Thanks for all the comments and support from my last post. It's been a whirlwind month, but I'm here to share what's happened since then. After the incident at my boyfriend's mother's house, things were tense. I was hurt and angry, and my boyfriend was caught between me and his mom. We had a lot of long, hard talks about our future, our child, and how we were going to handle family issues. It wasn't easy, but we both knew we had to make some tough decisions. My boyfriend realized how serious I was about not tolerating racism, especially from his family. He finally stood up to his mom. He told her that her behavior was unacceptable and that if she wanted to be part of our lives and our child's life, she would have to change. 
It was a tough conversation for him, and I'm not going to lie, I was proud of him for taking that step. His mom didn't take it well at first. She was stubborn and didn't understand why her comments were so hurtful, but my boyfriend didn't back down. He shared articles with her, talked about our experiences, and even got other family members involved to help her see the impact of her words and actions. Meanwhile, I was dealing with my own emotions about the pregnancy. I had been considering baby unaliving because I was scared of raising a child in a toxic environment. But as my boyfriend and I worked through our issues, and I saw him making real efforts to protect our future family, I started to feel more hopeful. We also went to couples counseling, which helped us communicate better and understand each other's perspectives. It was hard work, but it was worth it. We learned to be a team, and that made all the difference. As for his mom, it took some time, but she started to come around. She began to educate herself on racism and its effects. She even attended a few therapy sessions with us to understand better where we were coming from. It wasn't an overnight change, but she was making progress, and that was important. Fast forward to now, and things are looking up. My boyfriend's mom has apologized for her words and actions. She's been making an effort to get to know me and understand my culture. She's not perfect, but she's trying, and that's all we can ask for. My boyfriend and I are still together, and our relationship is stronger than ever. We've learned to face challenges together and support each other through tough times. And as for our little one on the way, we're excited and hopeful. We're preparing for the arrival of our baby, and we're doing it as a united front. We've also received a lot of support from friends and family. They've been there for us, offering help and encouragement. It's been amazing to see how much love surrounds us and our growing family. In the end, it's been a tough journey, but it's brought us closer together. We're looking forward to the future with optimism and love. We know there will be more challenges ahead, but we're ready to face them together. And that's the happiest ending I could have hoped for. Now, for the comments. Comment 1. Hey, I get why you'd feel cornered and why you'd consider an baby unaliving. It's a tough spot when the person you're with doesn't stand up for you, especially against racism. It's important he understands the gravity of the situation and the need for a united front. Take care of yourself first. Comment 2. I've been there with an unsupportive partner. It's heart-wrenching when they don't defend you. I ended things because that lack of support never changes. It's a good sign he's taking steps now, but keep your eyes open and make sure it's not just talk. Stay strong. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.